so as requested today I'm going to show you all how to draw this very easy sunflower and I want to apologize for just now getting up a drawing tutorial my new year started off very interesting but better late than never and anyways I'm going to start by taking my mechanical pencil and my Strathmore Tone Tan sketchbook and then the sand timer that I got because I was looking for something round I always find that it helps to trace the circle if you're trying to get a pretty good circle um, it can help to give you a starting point and so that's what I did but then I realized it was a little bit too large so then I decided to just kind of outline on the inside as you can see I'm doing right here and then I just go and erase the outer circle because we don't need it anymore so just depending on how big you want your sunflower is going to depend on how big you start off with the circle so that kind of matters to get that right at the beginning I had to make it smaller so the petals wouldn't um, go off the page I wanted to keep everything there to start off with the petals I'm just kind of cur starting curving inward at the circle and then it curves out slightly it curves back in almost to a point but not quite we're gonna round off that a little bit and you can decide how rounded off you would like the petals to be if you want them wider you can do so um, that's the thing about drawing things from nature that I love so much is that it does not have to be perfect so yeah, I'm gonna just start off by drawing one at the top one at the bottom and then one on either side so I'm gonna try to get these even then I'm gonna draw petals in between the four petals which now makes eight petals and then we're gonna draw in between that and fill up all the way around So what I'm doing here is just erasing a little bit, kind of cleaning up the lines in preparation to color so that we don't smudge so much pencil into the yellow on the petals. And then after I was looking at the petals, I was like thinking about how the sunflower needed to be just a little bit fuller. So what I did was I just drew the little tips of the petals behind, not every single space, but a lot of the spaces going all the way around. So the next thing I'm going to do is take this canary yellow and begin filling in all of the petals, just a very light layer to begin with. So now we're going to take this beautiful Spanish orange and I'm just going to start by making little lines, like adding a little bit of texture to the petals all the way around the circle. I just want to do that all the way around. Then I'm going to take my white and put highlights at the very tips of the petals and then as you can see I'm bringing several lines down just to give it a little bit more texture. I also like the idea of putting the dark at the bottom because it adds maybe a little bit to the dimension, at least that's what I'm hoping for. And basically what I'm trying to do is make it look like the petals are curving into the middle of the flower just very slightly and then the lighter at the top looks like it's curving out taking my canary yellow again I'm just gonna start by coloring over the Spanish orange and then color kind of in between the white lines as to not color over it too much so we can keep that, that highlight there Taking my yellow orange, I'm gonna bring some of those lines up, make it darker. Just kind of, I was just kind of playing around with color right here, trying to figure out how light or dark, how orange or yellow I wanted to go with it. And so yeah, I'm just trying to keep the bottom part the darkest though. Taking my canary yellow again, 
pressing my pencil quite hard right here and I'm just going to um, try to brighten up that color more. I, I, you tend to have to press your pencil harder if you're coloring over a darker color to really help that stand out. I'm just doing that mostly at the bottom all the way around. Just taking my yellow to orange, I can outline just a little bit. With my light umber, I'm now going to outline the petals, and then also I'm going to um, make the bottom parts of the petals a little bit darker. Just bringing out these lines a little bit to add a little more depth there, like there's more, a little more shading or shadow going on. Again, you can make this however darker light you want. You can totally skip this part. You don't have to do this. I'm going to fill in these sections just a little bit like it, the petals are casting a shadow over the back petals so it's going to be a little bit darker in between those little sections and I'm putting some shading also behind the petals right here as if the petals again are casting a bit of a shadow on the pa uh, petals in the back. With my black pencil I'm going to draw a little circle in the middle just to give you all an idea that this part is going to be smaller, a much smaller circle, probably about the size of a quarter. And I'm making tiny little dots all inside it. And this is where you can get really detailed. You totally, again, don't have to do it so detailed. I decided to go a little less detailed with this to make it easier. So right there, I'm just really very lightly coloring it all in. Very, very lightly, but you can still see some of those dot effects. Then I'm adding little tiny dots sprinkled on the outside, kind of like it's flowing from one section to the next. Um, okay, so next to show you all how um, far you want this section to go, this outer circle, I'm going to draw a little outline and fill it in with my canary yellow. With my light umber, I'm now going to add a lot of little dots. And then with my dark brown, I'm adding even more dots. Now I'm filling it in with more yellow. Then I'm adding a light layer of yellow just all on the outside quickly there. Then taking my dark brown and bring in some of those dots out more little bit, adding more black in the center, just darkening that up a little bit. And like I say in a lot of my other videos, I'd like to slowly add layer on top of layer of color because it's much harder to take away color than to slowly add it. So as I was slowly adding the dots, I realized certain sections needed to be a little bit darker and more fuller. And so that's what I'm doing here, adding more light umber um, going around and out right here. And just coloring all that in. I'm adding this gorgeous Tuscan red and I'm just gonna fill in a lot of dots, a little bit larger dots, going all the way around. And the dots are also going to fade out a little bit from the circle onto the petals because that's kind of more natural to have, have it kind of overlapping a little bit. So I'm just going to do that all the way around. This is definitely time consuming, so if you don't want to do a lot of little dots, just color it all in and scribble it maybe. If you color in circular motions, it can help. And then right here, I'm actually coloring in tiny little circular motions to fill in some of the space between the dots, like where the sketchbook paper is. going to take my light umber again, just add some more of those dots in between the Tuscan red, then add some dark brown dots, again just giving it more color and shading and add some yellow in there as well, just all kinds of things. <laughs>
So basically what I'm doing right here is just exchanging one color for another, gradually making it darker, giving it more depth. Then I'm going to take my light umber and outline some of the petals and then bring those lines up a little bit more, giving like the petals a little more creases at the bottom. So after outlining a little bit, I decided that I wanted the petals to stand out more, so I took my dark brown, just made it stand out a little bit more, a little bit darker, a little bit darker at the bottom, more shading, just gradually bringing that color around. As you can see, I'm bringing out the middle just a little bit, making it fade into the petals a little bit. It's almost like drawing little wispy bits of hair right here. I don't know how really to explain this, but yeah, I'm just going to do that all the way around. If you want to get even more colorful, you can add some crimson red, which I'm doing right here. Just very lightly bringing that up, adding some to the center of the flower, and then I'm coloring back over that a bit with my yellowed orange, just to kind of mute that a little bit. And then I'm taking my white pencil again and making the highlights stand out even more. Then after that, I go back and take my yellowed orange, make the bottom stand out a bit more. But I decided the center of the flower needed to be darker, so I took my dark brown and just all in there made it darker. And um, yeah, it was quite fun just layering color on top of color and seeing basically, you know, what what I wanted this sunflower to be and, and that's the best I can convey to you as you're drawing. Try to get a sense for like what you want your picture to look like, um, what represents you, would a brighter, more colorful sunflower represent you, would a darker one, would a multicolored one, heck, you can do like pink one, a, a rainbow colored one, a um, gr lime green sunflower, you know, you can really, you can basically do anything with art, so yeah, just totally make it your own, and of course, as always, have fun with it. And I took some black at the end and just went around really quickly in those little circular motions, making it a bit darker. So there we go for this simple sunflower drawing tutorial. I hope y'all found this helpful. Like I said at the beginning, I'm sorry, I'm just now getting a tutorial up for the new year. This is definitely a bit late, and hopefully I'll get one out a bit quicker next time. And as always, of course, feel free to send your sunflower drawings through my Instagram by like tagging me in them or DMing your picture, whatever you want to do. I would absolutely love to see it. And thanks again for all of your drawing suggestions. I've got all of that written down and I'm definitely going to um, try to get everyone's drawing tutorials up this year. So yeah, y'all have a great day and I'll see y'all next time. So as requested multiple times, today we're going to draw this really colorful sea turtle. So everyone grab your sketchbook and color pencils and let's get started. So for this drawing I'm using my Strathmore Tone Tan sketchbook and my mechanical pencil and I'm going to start by drawing an oval shape but it's kind of like an upside down egg shape and basically um, the top part is going to be larger and and at the bottom it's going to get a little bit smaller like an egg. So 
Then the next thing I'm going to do is erase just a bit of the top and kind of curve that in a little bit. Kind of making the, the room for the turtle's neck right there. And then I'm going to start by outlining very thin right at the neck. It's going to get a little larger as it goes out. And we're just going to outline all the way around. So now to give it a little bit more shape for this part, I'm going to start on a random side. And I'm just going to go down just slightly, come down and curve around and across. And do the same thing for the next part. And it's going to stop when we come down and across right at the edge there. We're not going to touch the edge and you'll see why in just a little bit. And we're going to do that all the way around. When you look at a turtle shell, it can kind of look confusing, like where do you be begin to draw because there's so many designs and patterns going on. So I like to split this into three sections to make it a bit easier. Up at the top, I'm going to go out from the line just a tiny bit, slant those lines in, make that line going across at the bottom. And you can start erasing the lines as you go down. We don't. It's basically a guideline, we didn't really need that line, but it's just to show us we're drawing just the center going all the way down. So as you can see here, I'm drawing these slanted lines almost in a stop, 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 <laughs> can't talk today, <laughs> stop sign shape. And basically I'm just doing that where I'm slanting out and making the sides go down, coming back in, and it's not perfect. It's not a perfect shape. I'm just kind of giving the illusion that there's some sort of shape going on. So yeah, we're going to make that all the way down. Basically, we're making five shapes, and then at the very end, it's going to do exactly what we did at the very top, just those lines slanting out. So now that we've done all of that, this next part is super easy on either side. We're just going to have these lines curve out, going all the way down, where you kind of space out from each shape, just from the corners, going to curve kind of down and hit the sides and that's basically it. For the head I'm going to start off by curving in a little bit for the neck, like a bit of the neck is poking out and basically you can draw a circle for the head shape just as a guide but it, it rounds off um, more at the bottom and then at the top there's more of a triangular shape that's not very pointed. So just keeping that in mind kind of helps to separate things into shapes. And for the arms swimming, I'm going to kind of just slant those lines a little bit. Then we're going to curve them up and down, well, almost like little hills. Um, again, <laughs> I like to name shapes. I feel like that helps me visualize things better. So yeah just these little hills and right here for a guide we're just going to curve just at the bottom and go back up following the lines kind of making it the same width curves back into the shell and it's not natural for a sea turtle to have perfectly curved fins or arms like that so to make this easier we're not going to get too detailed but just right at the sides right here, I'm just going to make these few little curves. Just quickly curve your pencil, like, you know, give it a little bit of an illusion, like there's more going on, more detail here. Before I go down to the feet, I'm going to make that a little bit larger. That's the wonderful thing about sketching out your drawing first, is you can kind of sculpt things by erasing and redrawing. So then for the fins, we're going to just curve curve out a little bit then do the same thing where we round it at the bottom and curve back up kind of making that all the same width it gets a little bit smaller as it gets towards the shell though and then at the very bottom just going to do the same little curves on either side just pick one side the feet kind of tend to point a little bit and then they curve up so don't overthink it too much. <laughs> There's plenty of pictures out there of sea turtles, plenty of video footage, and 
Of course, just like everything in nature, no two sea turtle is going to look exactly the same, but this kind of gives you an idea. Okay, so all over the sea turtle's body are like these kind of squarish, rounded, oval shapes. Can it be squarish, roundish, and oval all at the same time? <laughs> I don't know if there's another word for it, but just, you know, you don't have to be perfect with this. Basically, I'm just going to make these shapes a little larger at the bottom. And as it moves up the mountain or the little hill of the arm, going to get smaller. And I'm going to do the same exact thing to the other side. And I got to be a bit honest here. It really like weirded me out. I felt like the sea turtle had holes all in its body. Um, does anybody else think that <laughs> when looking at this picture? Maybe it's just me. Okay, so moving on, we're going to do the same kind of designs on top of the head, um, but they're larger. Not being too perfect with this. I, if I was going for a more realistic looking sea turtle, this would definitely be a much, much, much longer um, drawing tutorial. And I don't want to bore you all, so I try to, try to make these drawings as simple as possible to give the idea of, of what we're going for. And just basically, this is just a practice to help our drawing skills help us with learning how to use these colored pencils, basically. And I really hope it's helping. Okay, so now to begin coloring, I'm going to start by taking my white Prismacolor Premier Pencil and I'm just going to outline on the outside right here. And that's basically why we didn't make those little designs on the outer side of the shell touch to the side so we could have room for that. Just picking one side at the bottom, I'm gonna put a white highlight going all the way around. This is just basically my take on a sea turtle, and so that's why like the shapes and the colors are gonna be a little bit different. Maybe in the future I'll do a more realistic one, but this is just to experiment and have fun and play around with designs and color and see what we can come up with. So this part is a bit time consuming, but very easy. All I'm basically doing is just erasing and redrawing those lines one by one. Um, I didn't really know how to do this. I had to outline it first just to show y'all basically like what I'm trying to, what shapes I'm trying to go for. And I didn't feel comfortable freehanding that with a white pencil because you can't erase for some color pencil, unfortunately. So yeah, I had to, had to do it this way. So yeah, it just took a little bit of time. Then from there, I'm now going to color in all of the skin on the turtle, um, except those shapes that we just drew. With my dark green, I'm now going to start by very lightly outlining the inside of these shapes just to help things stand out a little bit better. And as I go along, I press my pencil harder to darken up the lines, make them more defined over time. Um, I always just like to start with a light color first, just to, just to get an idea where we're going, basically. Now, the thing about a sea turtle shell is there are different um, variations of sea, sea turtle shells out there, so um, you totally don't have to go with the colors that I'm using here. Um, this was a definitely an experiment for me. I had thought about doing more of an orange colored shell, but um, I decided to go with green because I thought it would be nice. But I will hopefully be drawing another sea turtle in the future, so y'all can decide which color y'all want it to be. But yeah, so now that we have this section outlined, I'm now going to pick the bottom part for our shading, it's our darkest point, with the same color green. And on the sides right here, I'm, I'm 
making the bottom and the sides um, a little darker as well. Um, yeah, just doing a very light coat of, coat of this first. From there, I'm taking my grass green and lightly coloring over the dark green, bringing some of that color up a little bit. With this very vibrant true green, now coloring over those greens and bringing the color up even more. Even at this point, I still wasn't quite sure how dark or light I wanted the shell. Like, did I want to go in the direction of a darker green or a lighter green? So after this color, I took my chartreuse and I brought that color up even more just to just to experiment, see what, what that would look like. And that to me really added something, uh, really added a pop of color. And if you want that, that's great. I still actually wasn't sure what I wanted. So I went back over with the same greens again, like the grass green and the true green and dark green and um, just layered color on top of color, smoothing those colors out, getting rid of that grainy texture that color pencils are known for leaving behind. So. I'm just layering cover, color on top of color and getting rid of rid of that texture and yeah, deciding what green I want to go with. So right here I just decided to make the shading a bit darker. I really wanted the shell to pop a little bit more, see how that would look. And I took the white and added more highlight at the top, kind of muting those colors a little bit, blending those colors together. So using all of the greens we just used for the top of the shell, we're going to use them for the side of the shell. And it was a little bit tricky because these little sections right here are smaller. So um, I couldn't quite add the detail that I would have liked. And I think I would have gone back and made it a bit lighter. Um, but I just, right here you can see I'm layering the colors on top of one another. Like the dark green, the true green, the chartreuse but I'm also leaving the white highlights showing. Um, those are what we first made and I thought that was really important to leave those that showing right there so you can see the designs or the outline a bit better. After that, I took the dark green and outlined it. I always like to sharpen my pencil really sharp before outlining to give it a more defined look. You can see I'm right, I'm outlining also the inside as well. I'm just gonna continue outlining all the way around. Took a break and went back to coloring in the shell. What I did was took my dark green and just brought those lines in a little bit closer. I wanted the white lines to to be a little bit more thin. So that's the great thing about colored pencils is it's, it's really good about layering colors. And so, yeah, I just brought in those, those colors a little bit more, making the white thinner. So what I did, I took my true blue and filled in the middle section of the arms a little bit more. And then I decided I actually didn't want to leave 
leave the color just in the middle. So right here I'm taking my ultramarine blue. I'm just going to outline that to help everything show up a little bit more. So then from there I'm going to outline and color in all of the shapes, which was definitely, definitely the most time consuming part. So if you don't want your turtle to be as detailed or have as many shapes, you don't have to draw it that way or color it that way. And I took the black pencil and I filled in the two little eyes. And then after that, I continued filling in the rest of the shapes. So yeah, <laughs> this, this took a while. So let's fast forward. So I changed my mind and decided to have the blue mostly coming from one side. And so I started at the top of its arm and as it comes down, it gets lighter. So that's where the white pencil comes in handy. So I can color over that blue a little bit. Then I did the same thing to the other arm. We're at the top of the little hills or the little flippers. Um, it's going to be darker and as it moves down, it's going to get lighter. And I'm going to do that on the feet as well, where I pick one side. I'm going to start with the left side that is darker. It's going, it's going to fade lighter. So after finishing the turtle, I felt like something was missing, so I decided to add kind of a water effect as if it was gliding on the water, and I thought, oh my gosh, I'm going to completely ruin this picture, but then I was like, no, let's, let's go for it. We're artists, we gotta be fearless. So I decided to add like just strokes, very, very light strokes of white, kind of curving that underneath the turtle. Um, then curves out from beneath it on the other side. And then in between the white lines, I use my cerulean blue. Just add a little bit more, more blue in there. Um, it didn't stand out quite as much as I would have liked. So I also added a bit of true blue and pressed my pencil a little bit harder, making the white and blues stand out a little bit more. the very last thing to bring it all together is take my basic acrylic paint and a very very small paintbrush. I'm gonna start by making fun designs on top of the shell in each little section. Um, first I decided to make a sun, lines going across with like triangles and dots and ocean waves and lines and I drew a flower over here. Um, just being super, super random with this. I didn't really give it much thought. I, um, I just kind of went for it. And so that's what I would encourage you to do is, um, is just to totally go for whatever designs make you happiest. Going down the water lines, I'm gonna make stars and droplets of water and bubbles and um, just go in with the flow. And then from there, gonna add water coming off of its little flippers like it's swimming through the ocean so it's got water coming off of it and just thought this kind of brought it to life it adds it adds something to it like the sun is shining down and down on the um, sea turtle everything seems to like glisten and sparkle out the ocean so so that's the kind of feel that I I wanted it to have So there we go for this drawing tutorial. Thank y'all so much for this request. This was a fun learning experience and I hope y'all found this video helpful and I'm super excited to bring more tutorials for y'all in the future. As always, feel free to send your drawings through my Instagram, like tagging me in your drawings or DMing them to me. I love to see them and I love that we are 
like building an art community that shares our artwork and our progress and I think that's really really awesome so yeah I'm excited to show y'all more tutorials in the future so stay tuned for that thanks for watching everyone bye so the first thing that I'm going to do is take my Strathmore tone tan sketchbook and a mechanical pencil and I'm gonna begin by drawing five circles and I'm gonna start with a very small circle and then draw one on the outside of that and then one on the outside of that and keep going until you have five and do not worry about these being perfect circles because uh, they're not going to stay circular shapes this is just our guide getting ready to draw the rose petals so feel free to even make them a bit curvy you know just wave your pencil back and forth again don't worry about it being perfect you just want five kind of circular type shapes starting in the inside of the fifth line i'm drawing five lines connecting from the fourth circular line to the fifth line in kind of a slanted manner just uh, kind of curving the lines as well so i'm going to do that all the way around and then after that i'm going to go on the inside of the fourth line and then from the third line i'm going to connect those kind of curvy lines um, again all the way around but instead of making five i'm going to start with four and then on the inside of the third line, I'm going to do the same where I connect from the second line, uh, just three curved lines this time all the way around. And then instead of doing the same thing in the inner part of the second circle, I am going to make this a bit different. This is definitely where things get a bit tricky, so I really hope this is easy to follow. But I'm going to start with this line kind of curving out from the first circle, and then I'm just going to outline that slightly, bring it back to a point. Then from there, I'm going to curve this line out and then outline that. Then I'm gonna sweep around like there's a little tail. And then from the second circle shape, I'm going to connect this kind of curvy line, hitting the tail and then curving back around, hitting the second line again, and then sweeping around down. And that kind of forms this spiral type shape. And as it curves around, it's hitting the point of that line we just made. Then I'm going to make a little connecting line, just a tiny little line right here. Then from that point, I'm connecting up to the little tail we made and then making a little curvy outline of that. So inside the circle, I'm drawing this kind of C shape. Then from there, I'm making a line connecting all the way across. Then I'm making a little tiny curve at the top, like a miniature little hill at the very top. And then I'm going to put a line inside that circle at the bottom. So now comes the fun part of shaping our petals. To start shaping our larger petals, I'm going to begin by lightly erasing, and then I'm going to kind of follow that little curve, and then I'm going to make the petal come to more of a point, because that's actually what some of the rose petals naturally do. Some of them can just curve a little bit around, but some of them have like a little point at the top, and then at the bottom there I, I had it curve around, I erased the line a little bit. After lightly erasing, I'm gonna sort of curve my pencil back and forth. Right here I made a little indention, as if like a bug took a bit of a bite out of one of the petals. And then I'm gonna stretch the petal out a little bit wider, and then just continue to kind of make these soft little curves and then curve back in. So basically that is what I'm going to be doing for the rest of this entire rose, is just extending the petals as the petals pan out, like as we get to the third, fourth, and fifth line, the petals are going to get a bit larger, so I'm going to extend them away from our guidelines. And as you notice, I'll just continue with the curvy lines, and some of the petals will end with the points at the very top, and then curve back in. So basically you just want to let your pencil freely flow and kind of let the petals fall where they may and see what happens. At the very end of shaping the petals, I felt like my rose was missing a bit of something, so in between those outer petals, I decided to make tiny little petals as if uh, more petals are growing, but they haven't quite bloomed out um, more yet. So anyways, I just thought it needed something to fill in those spaces a bit. So now on to drawing these musical charms. So what I'm doing here is just drawing a C shape and then I'm outlining that C shape. And I actually erased a bit of the petal just so it looks a little more three-dimensional like it's coming out of the petal and then curving around and going back in. And so I'm gonna make one more little loop um, underneath that by drawing this backward C shape, curving around, making it more 
of an oval shape. Now this is going to be my guitar pick and I'm drawing an upside down triangle for a guide. And then after I have that shape, I'm gonna make little curves at the points. That's usually what guitar picks look like is they have little curves at the points. And then I'm gonna round out the sides a little bit more. And then for the last two charms, I'm doing the same thing, drawing the little hoops, the little C shapes. And then from this one on this side, I decided to go with a little treble clef, um, but you can totally add your own type of charm. And then on the other side, I decided to do a little music note. Now after drawing everything, I'm going to take my black Prismacolor Premier Pencil and begin outlining this entire picture. To add the highlight on the rose, I'm taking my white Prismacolor Premier Pencil and I'm going to start adding the highlight mostly on the top part of the petals, but not all of them because some of the highlights are actually going to be in the middle of the roses. Since this is a musical inspired rose, I decided to add the lines on sheet music on just several of the petals. So what I'm doing right here is starting on the outside of the petal and curving in and down like it's going down inside the petal. And so as it's curving down, it's actually getting smaller, like the lines are almost connecting, but that's just giving the illusion that it's going further down inside the rose, if that makes sense. I hope this is making sense. Um, so anyways, then I'm just going to continue making five lines, uh, trying to make them the same width apart. Um, so taking my light cerulean blue, I'm going to color mostly on the bottom parts of each petals because that is where um, our darkest colors are going to go as far as the shadow is going to be the darkest there as if the petals are curving into the flower and as they curve out it's going to get lighter. I do add a bit of darker shading on the outer edges of the petal and that is just to give the illusion like the petals curving down just slightly but most of our darkest point is going to be at the bottom. And I also forgot to mention that I'm only coloring the petals with a sheet music blue and the other petals are going to be purple. Taking my true blue, I'm now going to color over some of the cerulean blue and I want the color to really pop and so you will see actually a lot of, sh uh, not shading on top of shade, coloring on top of coloring just to make the color really bold. And I gradually do this because as I'm coloring a picture, I'm not always quite sure how light or how dark or bold or whatever you want to call it, how um, much color I want to really add. And so I do this very gradually. And so as you see, I'm just, I first put the light coat on and then I added um, the light or the true blue. And then I also take the true blue and outline over the black outline. So right here, I'm using my indigo blue and I'm making just a tiny bit of a shadow at the bottom just to give it more depth. Using my true blue you'll notice that on some of the top parts of the petals I'm making just a little little tiny bit of a shade. Even then using my cerulean blue I'm lightly shading on the outer sections of the petal just as if it curved up you know to like our darkest point basically is where the indigo is and then it curves up, which is our highest point where the white is, and then the petal is curving over just slightly, which is where the lighter blue is. If I hope this makes sense. So as you will see in a little bit, I'm gonna go back over the blue petals and make it uh, bolder in color, but right now I'm gonna take my Parma Violet and just lightly begin coloring just the first layer of color, putting most of the shading at the bottom uh, part of the petals, and very light shading on the ends. Now taking my violet, I'm going to start darkening things up a bit by putting the shadows mostly on the bottom. I did put a little bit at kind of the points of the rows just as, um, just to kind of show the indention, I guess I would say, in the rows or the, the little curve at the edges. 
to add more layer of color. I thought it would be really fun to add my mulberry color and I'm just darkening up the shadows a bit more while gradually as it moves, the color moves towards the highlight the um, and the more in the center of the petals or on the edges, it is going to get lighter like I'm pressing my pencil lighter as I get towards the highlight, but as it as, you know pans down towards the shadow, I am pressing my pencil harder. Taking my violet blue, I'm now making the shadows even darker. For the very center of the rose, I'm being extremely random with this, so you totally can do whatever you want with the center of the rose, but basically I guess what I'm kind of doing here is adding a variation of blues and purples. Even though I said that the blue color was mostly going to be on the sheet music petals, I felt like there needed to be a bit of blue in the center to kind of help the uh, colors just flow all around. And so anyways, I'm just putting variations of light blue and dark blue and light purple and dark purple and making some of the shadows darker and adding some highlights, um, just where I felt like they needed. I don't know how else to explain it. I wish I could explain it a lot better, but I was extremely random with this part. So what I'm doing right here is taking the colors that we've already used and I'm going back over the areas that we've already colored and I'm just going to continue layering color on top of color, making the shadows darker, making the colors bolder, making the highlights brighter. And basically the reason I'm doing this is just not only to make the color stand out more and to gradually, you know, build up that color because like I said before, I wasn't sure exactly how colorful I wanted to make each petal, but also this really helps to get rid of that grainy texture that color pencils often leave behind, or I should say always leave behind. So yeah, that's what I'm doing here is just really quickly putting it in fast forward motion is just doing basically the same thing that I just showed you how to do, but adding more color. I mentioned before how I outlined the blue petals with my true blue, and I also did that for the purple petals where I outlined in dark purple and mulberry as well. And then I actually decided to go back, not exactly over that, more on the very edge of those colors and darken it up by out re-outlining in black. And to me, it just really, really helped the color to pop a lot more. I also decided to re-outline the sheet music on the petals as well, just to make them stand out more too. So the very last thing that I did coloring in the rose was take my colorless color blender and I tried my best to get rid of any leftover grainy sections of the colored pencil. It wasn't possible to get it all completely smooth, but I did what I could. So before we color the rest of the rose, I'm now going to draw this decorative design, kind of like a vine design. It's kind of our greenery since I'm not doing the traditional stem and leaves. And so this I kind of made up as I went along as well. But basically what I'm doing here is drawing three lines on either side. This line is going to curve down and around and it's going to be our longest line. And then the middle line is going to curve down and around. It's going to be a bit shorter. And then the last little curl is just going to curl at the top. And then I'm going to flip that around and do the same thing to the other side. And it definitely took quite a bit of time to get this more symmetrical. It, it totally was not completely symmetrical when I was done with it. At the, at the end of it, I was just like, oh, this, it's close enough. I'm just going to go with it. So don't worry about it being perfect. And you, again, you can make up your own design. You don't have to go with this, but this is what I'm doing for this design. I'm now going to quickly outline this with my dark green and then from there I'm going to outline on the edge of that with my true green 
and then on the very edge of that I'm going to color around with my chartreuse and I'm also not making perfect lines side by side I do kind of blend in the colors with one another and then I decided to go back and make the um, dark green lines actually a little bit thicker and then I just decided to recolor some of those lines as well and then on the very edge of the chartreuse color I added a white highlight Along the outer edge of the longest curls, I added some leaves, and I outlined that with my dark green. On the inside, I colored with my true green and chartreuse, and then I took my dark green again, and on just one side of the leaves, I added a, just a light shade of dark green, going down only one side of the leaves, just for a bit more shading. In between the smallest and second curl, I'm making this little line curved down going towards the second inside of the second curl, and then I'm outlining that with my dark green and then my true green. For the guitar pick, I thought it would be really fun to make it like a leaf shape, so I'm outlining that with my true green and then my chartreuse, and then I'm putting a highlight going down the leaves and then a highlight on either side of the pick. And then inside the pick, I'm taking my dark green and very lightly coloring because I'm taking my white now over that and turning it into a bit brighter green. To make the leaf shape show up a bit better, I'm taking my indigo blue and re-outlining it. For the gold chain, I'm making a highlight at the top of each chain. And taking my metallic gold, I'm coloring uh, this gold color at the bottom of each chain for a shadow and then I'm coloring over some of that with yellow and re-outlining it in my indigo blue taking my dark green I'm now going to color in the treble clef and the music note then I'm adding a white highlight and then a bit of my true green as well. And lastly, taking my black, I'm outlining the treble clef and the music note. I almost forgot to mention that I took my true green and made little dots at the end of this line, and then I made little dots going around the edge of the smallest fine. And of course, my picture would not be complete without some basic white acrylic paint. And you can totally skip this part, but I thought I just have to add it. I don't know why. I just, this is like one of my favorite parts to add. It just brings it to life a bit, I think. I'm adding small white dots in the middle of our little green circles. And then I'm adding little white dots in the middle of the leaves. 